Is that loud enough for everyone? It's good to see everyone here. We've got a few people still in line, so we want to give them just a minute to, to get their food and get to the table. Welcome, everyone. It's so good to see you here today. I love being amongst Rotarians, so it's, it's a great joy to be here today with all of you. We have a great program that we're going to be starting off with in just a few minutes. But at this time, if I could have you all stand with me, and we'll have our prayer and pre pledge Bow with me. Almighty God, thank you for the opportunity to come together as like-minded people who seek the best for our country. We pray for peace, for wisdom, and discernment as we work to make America a better place for all people to live. We pray for our elected officials that you would guide and direct them, that they would make, their, make the decisions that would be best for everyone. We pray for those who are charged with protecting us, both here and abroad, that you would keep them safe from harm. Thank you for those who are serving in our military, Father. Thank you so much for the sacrifice that they've made, their families have making. And I pray that you give them peace and comfort as they are serving. Father, protect them. And Father, thank you for the opportunity to serve our community through Rotary. Help us to make this a positive impact. And wherever we are, bless our time together, bless our city, our state, and our nation, and bless everyone here as we seek to serve others for your glory. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I'm, I'm Joseph Lesser, and I'm introducing our guests today. Um, we have Loretta Stevens, guest of Scott Stevens, Justin Holloway, guest of Jim Parham, Jonathan Hungerford, guest of Ramona Farrell, Lieutenant Colonel Rob Henson, guest of the club, Shannon Sports, guest of the club, Robert Capel, guest of the club, and Thomas Sanders, guest of George Fletcher. So I have the pleasure of welcoming one of our newer members, Casey Stevenson. So Casey, if you want to come join me for a moment. So Casey, come on up. Come on. Uh, so what's really cool about Casey is Casey is actually one of the individuals who went through our um, Service Above Self scholarship program. So he's actually been connected with Rotary for quite a while now. Um, and I'm going to say you like jumped right in, right? So I love that you put, so he's single. But we have several family members here. Um, and as far as our club is concerned, like you're just pretty darn awesome, right? You are affiliated now with the Greenville Literacy Association. You jumped in and volunteered to chair our literacy committee. Um, still looking for any co-chairs if you're interested. And then most recently, he also volunteered to chair our career day, which will happen in the spring. Again, happy to have a co-chair with him. And in that vein, Terry Weaver has offered to step up and help be an advisor and mentor to Casey in that capacity. Um, obviously, right, a passion for education, for learning, um, for sharing, right, your passion with others and really making a difference. And that really speaks to our club, right? We believe strongly in serving and making a difference. So with that, Casey, I want to welcome you to our club. Oh, I'm a little disappointed. We were going to have a special guest today and he lives far, far away, and his name is Santa Claus, and he was coming to our meeting today. But unfortunately, there's a sick elf, and Mrs. Claus has a real job other than that. So Santa had to stay home with a sick elf, but he's going to try to come next time. But the reason Santa was so excited about coming is he's heard about this great, great, great thing they're going to have in Greenville called Kringle Holiday Village. And he especially heard that it's our Rotary Club 
that is putting this great gift together to give to the city of Greenville. So he sends us regards, he sends us regards and hopefully he'll be here next time. So some of you may not know what Kringle Holiday Village is. On December the 11th and 12th, this Rotary Club, after two years of planning, is going to transform Floor Field into a European holiday market. You'll walk in and we'll have 40 local vendors selling their wares, which will be great. Continue on and you'll have this great photo op where you can get your jug of your glass of blue vine, your mug. If you haven't seen the wonderful mugs that group made, they're on the table out there. So you can have your glass of blue vine, have your picture made, or you can go to the beer garden, have you a cold beer. And then for the kids, they can go down on the field. We're going to have like four or five big, huge inflatables. One's a snowman, one's a slide. There's a little train that's going to go around the edge the kids can ride. And then, of course, there's Santa Claus. He'll be there, too. So it is going to be a great event. We'll have music. We're going to have entertainment. Um, do you know that they use a dugout for a stage? So on top of the dugout, we're going to have constant entertainment the whole time. In the beer garden, we're going to have a DJ and live music on Saturday night. And Saturday night is going to end with fireworks. So this is really going to be a great, great event. Many, many people in here have been working on this. If you have any part of Kringle Holiday Village, if you'd raise your hand. Look at that. That's awesome. So if you haven't had the opportunity, we can still take volunteers. We'd love to have you. Um, there's, you go to our website, Kringle Holiday Village. You can sign up to be a volunteer there, or you can sign up to be a volunteer right out here. There's a QR code. You scan it, sign up immediately, which would be very appreciated. This Saturday... They're going to be uh, taking some of those great flyers and putting them around town if you would volunteer for that. If you're busy this Saturday, you can just grab a handful out there, take them to your local um, little towns, put them, in vendor, put them in businesses, put them in Starbucks, put them in Panera Bread, put them in your office, tell people in your office about it. So we are depending on you to help us spread the word, and we would certainly appreciate that. So just scan the QR code or go to the website to do that. And hopefully this morning at 10 o'clock, you all got a VIP invitation. We are having a VIP event on Friday night and anybody's welcome, but I want to make sure that you Rotarians know that we would love to have you there. Our sponsors will be there. We're going to have Kelly Joe on acoustics for us. We're going to have great food, um, drinks, and we're having a um, silent auction. Thanks to uh, our Upstart Warrior um, members. We appreciate that. And if you have anything that's a value, not just anything, but something of value, you would like to donate to the silent auction, just see me today and we'll make that happen. We still need a few more items, so we'd appreciate that. And then I will have to say, some of you may have used DACDB before. And at times I've been disappointed with DACDB, but miraculously, thanks to George Fletcher and Terry Weaver, they have come up the easiest way for you to be a part of our 50-50 Kringle cash. You go on, you give $10, and you get a chance to win half of the proceeds. And I think everybody could use a little extra Kringle cash over the holidays. So make sure you do that and tell other folks about it. And, um, you know, we might could get it up there, 5000 10000 whatever. That would be great. And like I said, um, many of you have seen on TV. Teresa's been on TV. We've been on the radio. We've been in the paper. We are really having a lot of people um, interested. In fact, this last Sunday, we did uh, the Upstate Veterans Salute. We were out there. We were handing out flyers. And a lot of people came up, Teresa, I saw you on TV. And of course, um, uh, they've seen us. They've heard about it. And we have really sold already like 1,600 tickets. So the goal, I think, for most people is 10,000 people. Of course, my goal is 15,000 people. And if you're a little competitive like me and you want to show them that we just had the greatest event ever, then I encourage you to do your part and tell everybody. So you can buy tickets, you can volunteer, you can buy Kringle cash, all at the website, um, KringleHolidayVillage.com. And um, Santa did add a little surprise last time. If you know children, we have a little elf and our little elf needs a name. So you can also find out the details of how to put in to name the elf. 
And so if you know any little kids that want to be part of that, that is really fun. So we're looking forward to having you help volunteer, buy Kringle cash, tell people about it, and especially to buy tickets and encourage your friends and family, because this is going to be the greatest new holiday tradition in Greenville since Roper Mount Holiday Lights. Thank you all. I don't know whether the order of the program was meant to be a segue, um, but that was, a, that was a perfect one because I am going to talk about the Rotary Foundation. And um, the th it, it creates a lot of excitement, I know. Um, the, um, what we're doing, what we did with Roper Mountain Lights and what we're doing with the Kringle Holiday Village is to raise money to do what we want to do as Rotarians in the community. That's where the money goes. So the point of Jane's um, enthusiastic um, speech is that the more money we're able to raise, the more this is successful, the more opportunity we have to put money back into the community. The Rotary Foundation puts some money back into our community, depending on how much we give to the foundation, and Rotary Foundation is what supports the whole Rotarian humanitarian causes throughout the world. So I don't know whether when the last time was that you looked at the Rotary International website. <clears throat> I'm not even going to ask. Um, but they are expressing some of the concepts of Rotary and of the foundation a little bit differently than I've seen uh, and that I remember. Um, have you ever been in this situation where you have talked to your child or your spouse or your um, employee? and you've talked to them about something that is really important that you think that they ought to get and they don't seem to get it. And then somebody, a third party, a coach, a teacher, um, uh, some other person comes in and says exactly the same thing that you've been saying. And it's as though light has finally dawned and that this person is so much smarter than you about getting their point across. Well, Rotary Foundation, I think, is trying to see if it's expressing itself in the right way. If it uses some other words can it get across a little bit more successfully what it does and what happens with the foundation? So um, I just wanted to show you that sometimes what the Rotary is trying to do right now. So a quick refresher about um, what the Rotary, what, what Rotary is defining itself. It's a global network of 1.2 million, million neighbors, friends, leaders, and problem solvers who see uh, a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. So it's the lasting change, it's the sustainability. So over half of our 110 year history, the cause we have been most connected to in people's minds has been the eradication of polio by distributing and administering, uh, administering the polio vaccine. And members of this club have been involved in turning this picture of afflicted children during the polio um, epidemic into these pictures of children who thanks in large part to Rodeo, Rotary, will never suffer from polio, as shown by their fingers here that are marked with the purple ink to show that they have received the polio vaccine. So while polio may be the, the most well-publicized effort of Rotarians solving a worldwide problem, the Rotary Foundation came into being largely to identify other humanitarian causes in the world that needed to be addressed and they needed our skills and support. That's the way they do their planning. This is what they decided on in terms of doing their funding. And they're talking about and explaining those causes a little bit differently than before. Anybody remember how many causes there are? Six, seven, hmm. Okay, we'll see. Here are three of them. Promoting peace. Rotary encourages conversations to foster understanding within and across cultures. We do our own part in this with our uh, Peace and Conflict Resolution Conference that will going to take place next spring. Oops, sorry. Back. Um, fighting disease is the middle one. That's, of course, partly polio, but it's also HIV, AIDS, malaria. Most recently, it was fighting COVID and finding other ways to combat um, and advance the possibilities of getting rid of COVID. Providing clean water, sanitation, and hygiene, one of the worldwide causes of malnutrition and disease. So we support local solutions to bring clean water, sanitation, and hygiene to more people every day. And the important part of that 
is to understand that these are local solutions. The idea is not to swoop in with ideas and build things that can't be maintained. The idea is to make it possible for local um, areas to be able to maintain this for themselves. Three other causes, saving mothers and children. Nearly 6 million children under the age of five die each year because of malnutrition, poor health care, and, healthcare, and inadequate sanitation. So we expand um, access to quality care. Another one is supporting education. We know well in this particular Rotary Club how important that is. Casey just gave us an example of that. Um, more than 775 million people over the age of 15 in the world are illiterate. Growing local economies is another one of the causes. We carry out service projects that enhance economic and community development and create opportunities for decent and productive work for young and old. And we especially have been interested in furthering local entrepreneurs, especially women, in those areas where that has been so very difficult. Now I heard George Fletcher, if you know George Fletcher, you know that he is almost always right. And in this particular instance, he is right again. There used to be six, now there are seven. Here's the new one, protecting the environment. So Rotary members are tackling environmental issues in the way that they always do. They come up with projects, they use their connections to change policy, and planning for the future. And here's the, here's the thoughtful way that they've looked at these. They're trying to say, well, will, will climate change, not just is there climate change, that's not what they're, what they're interested in trying to solve the debate over. They're saying, will climate change bring more poverty? Will we be able to stop its worst effects? So now they're trying to think of ways that they can work on this. A second one is tackling the contentious issue. In, uh, in these kind of times, the citizens climate lobby brings an even handed approach to advocacy in the area of climate change. And then Rotarians understand that the whole world is our backyard. And so we're seeing what we now can do to protect our backyard and to protect the environment. So since it was founded more than hundred years ago, the foundation has spent more than $4 billion, $4 billion on life-changing sustainable projects. And if you remember nothing else, just remember that what the foundation tries to do is life-changing, sustainable projects. That's what the money goes for. And with our help, we can make lives better in our community and around the world. So our support of the foundation enables us as an organization as it, and as individuals to work on solving the problems that are connected with our seven causes that impact the world, but also impact our local community. So the grants that we apply for, for example, the ones that we get to help Alexander Elementary, those grants that we apply for are funneled through the Rotary Foundation, through district grants. And the amount that we can apply for is based on our per capita contribution level right here in this room and right here in this club. So the more that we as individuals are able to contribute to the annual fund in the Polio Plus Avenue of the foundation, the more opportunity we have to get some of that money back through a district grant and therefore enable us to do even more in the community. So we urge you to make sure that we can continue to do things like those at Alexander Elementary, and that's up to us. Um, when, when polio is now almost a thing of the past, the seven causes that Rotary is committed to are ongoing. Um, eventually, you're going to hear about the Paul Harris Fellows, and those are people who contribute $1,000 to the foundation over any period of time, any extended period of time. It could be years. And then those who become members of the Paul Harris Society, which means $1,000 per year. Regardless of your level of giving to the foundation, what we are asking to do is to get to this. This is 100% of people in our club giving to the foundation every Rotarian, every year. We were at 77% last year. We would love to be able to get to 100%. This, this organization is galvanized now. We're going with the Kringle Holiday Village gangbusters, and I hope that we can do the same thing with understanding how much we can affect the foundation and what we're able to do in that. So thank you, and you'll, you'll see more about this, but um, go to the Rotary Foundation, just Google it, and you'll find a way to make a donation of any size as possible for you. Hey, thanks, Connie. Uh, my name's Charlie. I've been a pres um, president. 
I've been president here. I've been a member of the club since 2015 and uh, have no desire to be the president, by the way. Uh, this is a special week for veterans. Uh, November 11th is Veterans Day. Uh, we've referenced that several times. Um, if I could just ask anyone that has served at least a day in the military, stand up. Uh, let us know you served. Yeah. I, I don't think we have a way of acknowledging those on Zoom if they serve, but there's probably a handful. Um, and some of you that I uh, didn't serve, may be surprised with some of the faces you saw. So uh, thank you guys for your service. Thank you for uh, what you've done for our country. Uh, so last year we had the uh, pleasure of having Secretary Will Grimsley, um, one of McMaster's cabinet level members, government McMaster's cabinet level members speak to us about the state and what the state is doing to help veterans. Uh, and this year we really wanted to hear from uh, the National Guard specifically to hear about uh, what the Guard is doing uh, to, pr to protect our state and also um, supplement a lot of efforts here at the state level with the work they do. So uh, glad to have uh, General Jeff Jones here today. Uh, General Jones um, is a native of South Carolina, 1987 Citadel graduate, and has served uh, in the Guard since 1987, has served in Iraq and Kosovo, as well as other uh, locations around the world. Uh, General Jones became the Deputy Adjutant General in 2019 um, and has been really uh, leading the National Guard from his perspective and his vantage point in some unique ways. Uh, General Jones is commanded at almost every level and um, hopefully tells some of the stories about uh, some of the experiences in the military with some of those um, unconventional commands as well. Uh, he has a master's degree from University of South Carolina, Columbia. I think that's legitimate, correct, sir? Okay, yeah, just, just saying. Um, your, your partner in crime is a Citadel grad, so just said that for his sake. Um, is also a graduate of the U.S. Army War College. Uh, he resides in Mount Pleasant, and he and his wife, Amanda, have three kids. So, sir, come up and share with us, and uh, if you would, uh, take about five minutes after you're done for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. So good to see. You. I tell you, it's an honor to uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, as as uh, Charlie said, my name is Jeff Jones. That's an easy name to remember. But just in case you need some help, uh, when I was promoted to uh, general, our ceremony, I was leaving, and my wife was in the car, and my then eight year old daughter was in the back. And my wife asked me. She said, "What kind of general are you going to be?" I said, "What do you mean?" She said, "Well, they're brigadier generals and they're major generals and." What kind of general you're going to be? Before I can answer, my daughter in the back said, "I bet he's going to be a dollar general." So, 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 so every time we go by a dollar general, she says salute, and I have to beat her. But, um, but no, um, so, 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 so go to if you're ever in Columbia, I work full time across from Williams Bryce Stadium, and uh, come in and ask for the dollar general, and they'll bring you right to my. I want to thank Charlie uh, for the invitation. Uh, I want to thank him more for Upstate Warrior Solutions for all they do to connect, to inspire, and to lead veterans and their families. You know, veterans are, are among our most treasured uh, uh, resources uh, in, in America, and, and they get after it every day, engaging them, providing them with that, with that purpose, and also engaging the community uh, to assist. So, I appreciate it. I asked Charlie, I said, what kind of speech do they want to hear at, at, at the Greenville Rotary Club? And he said, uh, it needs to be like the 2017 solar eclipse. And I said, you mean inspirational and all inspiring? He said, no, it needs to be over before you know it. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to oblige him on it. But hey, let me also, is, isn't it great? Isn't it great to be face to face again? look at each other across the table, right, and, and what we've been through uh, as, a, as a state, and God bless any of our medical professionals. If you're in the audience, you are the heroes. Thank you for what you've done, and, and for us to be together again and to be able to recognize that once again, God has shed his grace on thee, and, and uh, I will tell you, this is only my second speech after COVID. I got to speak at a veterans event at First Baptist in Columbia last weekend, 
and I really wanted it to be inspirational, right? And I finished it, uh, and, and, I, and I saw this kid. He came up to me afterwards, and he said, hey, sir, here's a dollar. And I said, well, why don't you put that in the offering plate? He said, well, I think you need it more. My daddy just said, you're the poorest speaker he's ever heard. So, so I, I promise you there, there'll be a non-smoking show at 7 o'clock. I'm going I'm to end this, right? But um, I, I want to I thank Rotary. I want to thank the difference that you make. Uh, and what a great introduction. You talk about changing lives, right? And, 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 and making the difference both locally, state, and nationwide. And I will tell you, in the business of veterans, mentors make a difference. And I know this club is actively engaged in that. And for that, I, I want to thank you. Uh, I also want to congratulate the city of Greenville on where you are now. In 1980s, I was in the Citadel cycling team, and I participated in the first ever Fall for Greenville bicycle race downtown. And, and, and uh, it was a big square kind of in the area, you know, and, and uh, we kick off, and there's about two, 300 bicycles, and I was first. And I was, as far as Gump says, I was pedaling, pedaling, and I, and I get around the corner, and I take a left, and I look back, and, and you know, I got the lead, and I take this other left. And I was going so fast, I wrapped my bicycle around a sign in front of the old Greenville Municipal Auditorium and spent the, I spent the night, I was going so fast, the handlebars landed in Simpsonville. I mean, it was just, it was, it was really bad. And, and for years, I could go by and see the big dent in the sign. And they, they went, it went away. But um, I say all that to say that the downtown Greenville of then is not the downtown Greenville of now. And it's a place that you can certainly be proud of. And I congratulate all of you for having a hand on that. But let me quickly just say that it's an honor to be standing in front of you as a member of your National Guard. I will tell you in 2021, uh, the 10,000 Army National Guardsmen, our 1,200 Air National Guardsmen, uh, work hard at it every day to earn your trust. And, and, and what I can tell you uh, is, um, is, is they are citizens at their best. And when the storms hit, when the, when the hurricanes come, when there's a call from around the world, and, and yes, when there's a pandemic, your guard, your guard will respond, and they will respond with an intensity like no other. And they're focused, and they also understand, as, as I and, and many in our organization recognize, Rob, with the 17 soldiers who paid the ultimate sacrifice, they operate with the mindset there's no sacrifice too great. They are Americans at their best. I hope, I hope we're, we're, we're making you proud. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to talk something a little different, uh, Charlie, um, because what I wanted to do is take this opportunity to, 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 to talk about Veterans Day, because I submit to you that Veterans Day is each of ours. It belongs to all of us. Yes, it's, it's recognizing those who serve in uniform, but I believe it all involves, it, it, it belongs to all of us, and I'll, I'll explain that. But, you know, and, you know, when you get a chance to speak in a city which since 1831 has done so much to preserve its military heritage. Getting a chance to speak to you is, is what I call a no-fail mission. So I really tried to think about how could, how, could I, how could we talk about Veterans Day as it applies to all of us? And I started thinking, and I, I started thinking, can you just imagine the thousands and thousands and thousands of Greenville residents that, 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 that raised their right hand and stood the line in defense of our country? Can you think about the 5,880 names that are listed on the Greenville County Veterans Monument at the, at the corner of President Street and University Ridge, all those who serve their country. Can you think about the 14,000 Greenville area residents who raised their hand during the Vietnam War? And we know 108 of them from this city did not come back and their names are on the monument at the, at the Vietnam Veterans War down in Cleveland Park. I, I think about the six Furman University graduates uh, who served in World War I and didn't make it back, including Lieutenant John David, a Furman graduate who was the first American officer killed during World War I. We also know that 55 of uh, graduates of Furman University did not make it home from World War II. I think of some names you need to know from Greenville, Corporal Robert Kinnamore, United States Marine Corps, February of 1950, is serving in Korea as part of a Marine Corps infantry company that is being overrun. Corporal Kenmore is manning a machine gun. He looks up and he sees his platoon commander killed. So 
So his platoon is without a leader. Corporal Kenimore, being the third lowest rank in that platoon, steps up, takes charge, provides directing fire. And during the fight, a grenade lands in a machine gun nest in his company. Corporal Kenimore steps on that grenade to absorb uh, the impact of that grenade's detonation. Uh, his actions saved lives. And for that, he earned our country's highest award, the Congressional Medal of Honor. And he is one of four Greenville residents who received the Congressional Medal of Honor. Names that we need to know. I think of a, a petty officer, Michael Thornton, in 1972 in, in, in Vietnam, who was leading a daring mission to, uh, to do POW or uh, extraction. Uh, and his entire squad is injured. He carries them one by one, despite, despite gunfire and artillery fire. He carries them to safety. He, he receives the Medal of Honor. I think of Joe Hooper from Piedmont. Little Joe Hooper from Piedmont, the second most decorated veteran of the Vietnam War for his services in Vietnam. And later, he was promoted to captain, given a battlefield commission, uh, earned two silver stars, six bronze stars, eight purple hearts being injured in combat. And he receives the nation's highest award, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Unfortunately, he comes home. He does not handle the way well the way the Vietnam veteran uh, is, 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 is treated or, or regarded by many Americans. He resorts to uh, heavy drinking, and we, we lose him to an alcohol-assisted ailment at age 40 in 1979. And, and I think of Robert Owens from Greenville, six foot three, 235 pound U.S. Marine that's landing on the beaches of Bougainville uh, in, 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 in the Pacific, World War II. He looks up and his, the rest of his Marines are coming on shore and there's a machine gun nest. And without any order, he charges the machine gun vest, nest. He charges the nest. He's lost, but in his loss, he saves Marines. You know, and, and then last for our Air Force friends in the audience, Major Rudolph Anderson from, from Greenville, Clemson class of, of 1948, logs over 2,000 uh, 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 combat hours in Korea. 14 years later, he is flying a spy plane over Cuba when he is shot down by a Soviet missile. Before being shot down, the pictures he recorded uh, of, of known Soviet missile sites in Cuba set up conditions for a political and peaceful resolution of, of the Cuban Missile Crisis. So think about it, just a few names. And I talk about the names that served. They walked the streets of Greenville County. They were born in Greenville and, and, and over in Piedmont, you say Anderson County. Um, they called Greenville and Greenville County home. They were, they were, they were Americans uh, I, I say at their best. And they were heroes. And, and to me, a hero is a common person who does an uncommon thing, uh, regardless of whether you're in the military or not, for the betterment of the cause and for the betterment or his, of his or her uh, fellow man. So, so, so in this moment, when we, when we, when we, talk, of, you know, we talk about Veterans Day and, 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 and what it means, uh, I, I, I ask the question, what does it mean going forward, right? What, what does it mean for all of us as members of the American family? Now, I, 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 I put it in context, right, of what I call the three R's. Back in Chesterfield, we call that reading, writing, and arithmetic. But what I'm talking about today is, 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 is recognition, remembrance, and responsibility. The first is recognizing that as you and I sit here around the world, there are those that are underwriting our freedoms underneath the sea, at sea, on the ground, in the air, and even space. And I'm talking, of course, of course about our soldiers, our airmen, our sailors, our Marine Corps, uh, our Coast Guardsmen, uh, and, 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 and they're also supported steadfastly by DA civilians. And, and, and they, are making, they are making us proud. Now, I tell people all the time that you're looking at the wrong guy if you're expecting me to bash today's young generation. Right? We, and, and it seems to me in, in my experience, is to be the trend, but I believe, and, and they're different. Lord, I, Lord, I have three of them, and they, and they, and you talk, they talk different, they communicate different, they have difference in likes. But as we stand here right now, there's there there is a soldier leading 
uh, uh, other soldiers, and he's probably a sergeant, 20, 21 years old, lean soldiers in the mountain range uh, somewhere, a special operations soldier uh, who is in the most dangerous situations guarding our way of life. I think of a 21-year-old sailor right now who is, who, is, who is steering a $2 billion nuclear submarine somewhere uh, around the world. I think of an airman who's manning a, uh, a, a, a station of, which is a cyber station, which is protecting our critical infrastructure. They are, they are better led, they are better equipped, and they are better trained uh, for, for the future, and they're making us proud. Another group that I feel we need to recognize, and we talk about Veterans Day, and so many of you in here, uh, are, are those who sacrificed, and again, our veterans, those who sacrificed so much uh, when their country called, very much like the Lord said to Joshua, right? He said, here I am, I will not fail thee, and, and I will not forsake thee, right? And, and, and that's the veterans. And we know so many veterans uh, in here served. You put aside your personal aspirations in order, to, in order for the betterment of our country. And we know you didn't do it for money. We know you didn't do it for fame. We know you didn't do it for fortune, but you did it instead to demonstrate your singular love for this country. And it is that courage, it is that commitment, it is that dedication who makes us who we are today. Make no mistake about it. Who we are is still the world's indispensable nation, the land of the free, the home of the brave, and a beacon of hope in an often troubling world. And we know that veterans, what makes all makes veterans great is that they serve, but when they, can, when they came home, they continued to serve. They served in school. They served as a school teacher. They, they served government. They served public office. They served in Rotary, right? And we, and we know uh, they served in nonprofit organizations. Again, I mentioned Warrior Upstate Solutions who reinforce that in order to, 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 to give that, in, that, that veteran uh, some self-worth, it really starts with something simple but important. That's a job. That's a job. But I think most of all what, how veterans serve uh, is that they instill patriotism in their homes. And isn't that so important? Because we know, we know that patriotism is not an inborn trait, but it is a learned behavior. And you won't find cities and counties that perpetuate patriotism uh, better uh, than this area. You know, Charles Province uh, said, it, said it best when he was talking about the, the veteran. He said, it's, it's the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech, it is the veteran, not the reporter, who's given us freedom uh, of the press. It is the veteran, uh, not the community organizer, who's given us the right to protest. Uh, it is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes our flag, serves under the flag, and whose coffin is even draped by the very flag that gives a protester the right to burn it if he or so choose. The least we could do is say thank you. One other thing about veterans, most special moment I ever had in uniform. 2005, I came home from Iraq. I was in the last plane with the leadership. We were flying in uh, to, uh, to New Jersey, McGuire Air Force Base. And, um, and, and we were delayed. We were one of three aircrafts. Our soldiers were in the first two. We were delayed. Uh, we land at, at midnight at McGuire Air Force Base. We, we didn't have a connecting uh, walkway. Uh, uh, whatever they call it, the Air Force Airport. You, we, we took stairs and walked down across the tarmac. It had been raining. And when I look in the distance, everything's dark, and we see lights at the end, and I see three individuals. And as we approach, uh, they were all veterans. First veteran hands me a cup of coffee. Second veteran hands me a sandwich. The third veteran was a World War II veteran that was in a wheelchair. And he stood up and he saluted me. And uh, best salute I ever got, best moment, uh, one of the best moments of my life, because I walked away understanding the real value of the veteran. You see, the veteran, the veteran still believes in the cause. The veteran doesn't forget those who came after them. And the veteran knows that the, um, the, the world is, is a better place because of the United States of America. And while we talk about recognition, how about, how, we know, we know, that veterans, when they were soldiers, and our soldiers, they don't serve alone. The military families, the military spouses who, who graciously and steadfastly serve, they're serving a lot 
to, 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 to the sacrifice of their own career. That's why when we see legislation and talk of providing veterans preferences to spouses and spouses who move into a state and, and, and we as a state help ease the licensure uh, process, uh, we're, we're doing right by the military spouse because he and she has toted their share of the water in this. And how about, how about those military kids? the most resilient at all. May God always bless the military family. And so when we talk about recognition, rep remembrance is the second. And, and it remember, isn't remembrance so far because it's about remembering who we are and, and, and the price that was paid. And, and, and what does remembrance mean to me? It means remembering those who didn't make it home. It, rem it means remembering those who still struggle to make it home. Sure, they've made it home physically, but we know at the height of the, of, the, of the war on terror, one out of every three soldiers had some type of issue. One out of every six had some type of mental health issue. One of five, a substance abuse order. They left the battlefields, but make no mistake, the battle still rages. The battle still rages on for them. It's about remembering the missing in action. 714, including especially Frankie Bennett, uh, who was what was from Powdersville, uh, and he was lost in 1968. He has never made it home. We talk about remembering the prisoners of war. Buddy Bent, I met down in Charleston. He was a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. He remembered in the Ardennes Forest in the winters of 1944. It was so cold, he took his boot off, and he could not get his foot back into his boot because his foot is swollen. He lost his leg at the same time he was taken captive by, by the Germans and actually had to make it through a German POW camp nursing a leg. And, you know, he told me, he said, Jeff, he said, if I had to do it all over again, become the man I am now, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change a thing. It's about remembering the contributions of women. Lila Williston in Chesterfield was a member of the Women's Army Air Corps. Every parade we had in Chesterfield, she was up front in her Women's Air Corps hat. And I used to say, Miss Williston, why do you walk at the front of the parade? She said, well, I'm not getting behind the horses if that's what you're asking. But she was proud. And she was proud of the contributions of the difference that women made in, 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 during, the great, during the Great War. And I think of the soldier under our command uh, that we lost, Crystal Stout from Traveler's Rest. If you ever look up her name, a smile that will melt you smile that would melt you. And think about African Americans who served in a country that didn't treat them uh, as, as, as it didn't treat them as equals, but yet they served in gallantry in each and every war, like Corporal Freddie Stowers from the Anderson County area of Sandy Springs, the first African American to earn the Congressional Medal of Honor for combat in World War II, World War I, excuse me. And then I think about Gold Star Mothers, just in case you don't know, a Gold Star family member is someone who has lost a loved one to the cause. And in 2014, I visited a soup kitchen that Elaine Johnson was serving soldiers, and I got to know her. And I found out that Elaine Johnson had a son named Darius Jennings. 2003, Darius was in the initial wave in Iraq. Uh, once we, once we, we, we established operations there, they started leave. And he had a chance to come home on leave for his mother's birthday. Two helicopters leading Baghdad Airport. And he got into the first helicopter. It was going to take them to the airport, and then they were going to fly uh, out of country. He found out there was a soldier in the second helicopter whose wife was expecting the Darius on his own told that soldier, you switch with me. You get in the first helicopter, I'll get in the second helicopter. That second helicopter was shot down. I think of the strength and the grace that Elaine Johnson shows each and every day. We can't forget him. So finally, and this is, I think, where you come in. We, we, you know, we, recognition and remembrance means nothing if we don't understand what's our responsibility. Each and every one of us is the American flag, as, as the part of the American family. Uh, then we then we leave uh, leave to the day. As I said, I believe I believe that Veterans Day belongs to you too, it, because you see, we take days like Veterans Days, and, and it reminds us the importance of what we have to do to strengthen America, to strengthen the home. And strengthening the home is so important because there is no way we can be strong in the world 
unless we're strong at home first. And what does is, what, what is strengthening the home mean to me? To the veterans in the audience, I think it means you tell your story. We need you to tell your story. And Oda, we need it ever so much, specifically with our older veterans. We know that we are officially under 100,000 World War II veterans that are alive today. We're losing 275 a day. We also know that when I joined the Army, 55% of all families had somebody who served. I, my dad served in the Navy. He was very happy when I went in the Army. But, but that's a joke. But, 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 but I had family. I had that perspective. 15% of all soldiers who are be, or students that are being, they have somebody in their family. So they don't have the perspective. And we also need veterans to tell their stories to the communities, right? To, to get the communities to understand military service, how important it is and how they can in turn provide their services, whether it be mentors, whether it be uh, uh, one of the seven causes like you see here uh, in Rotary, it, it's so important. I, I, think, I think we all have a responsibility uh, to, to, to not uh, allow uh, misjudgments or assumptions uh, to to exist about the young people uh, that are serving that are serving today, um, we've got to, we've got to stand by our next generation. We've got to stand by them. It's something that's extremely important to me, and it's very concerning personally to see how quickly we are to dismiss uh, our future leaders. And that's that means we've got to we got to renew our relationships with them. We got to refer, reaffirm them, and, and we've got to not lose faith in them. Uh, once, once they go out and as they take the reins. And, and we've got to remember, you know, we just finished a, a, a season of local elections, and we know that there are many elections that are coming, but the truth of the matter is the hope of America does not rest in those who walk the hallways of the Capitol. The future the hope of America rests with those who are walking in the hallways of the Greenville County School District. So there, there are children today, leaders tomorrow. We've got to prepare them well. And I think strength in the homeland means supporting those organizations that help those veterans make it all the way home, whether it be Upstate Warrior Solutions, whether it be the Greenville County Veteran Affairs. Wait, we know, we know that tonight, before you and I go to bed and we wake up in the morning, there are going to be, on average, 22 veterans in this country who are going to take their lives. We cannot, we cannot accept that. We cannot. We, can, we, we, we cannot resign ourselves to that being a reality. We, as a military, we as a country, and I think military or not, we have got to attack, we have got to attack the enemy of suicide. That is our responsibility, yours and mine, each and every one of us, to confront suicide, tell people, I understand, and assist them. Again, I consider it the biggest threat to national security. And then, and then it means understanding you and I have responsibility to fly the flag, to reinforce patriotism, to not rest until every missing in action is accounted for. I think of Major Stephen Knott of Greenville, lost and shot down 1967. Uh, his body was found. He was returned to Greenville County in 1984. Unfortunately, his parents had died, had died by then, so they never given the appropriate closure. And, and I think strengthening the homeland means that we need to know who our gold star families are. As I mentioned earlier, for the sacrifices made, we need to identify those in the community and we need to, we, we need to be there for them. And, and, and we don't say, I understand, because we don't understand. But what we do say is you do not walk alone. And we laugh with them, we cry with them, we share with them and we be their friend. So that's, that's, that, that's it. Recognition, remembrance, and, res and responsibility. And, and it's an opportunity for us to remind ourselves, we each, we each are a part of, of Veterans, Veterans Day. And that you make a difference. I, I'll leave you with a quick close of story of, of well wishes. In 2004, uh, I found out I was going to deploy uh, to, to Iraq. The day before I left, I was called to a family friend's house, a, 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 a U.S. District Court judge by the name of Saul Blot Jr. in Charleston. And, and he, he, at the end, if I want to say he was 90, 90 80, he's about 80, 86, I think he was. But anyway, just a picture of your grandfather, that's, that's Judge Blot, right? And he invites me in and sits down. He said, let me tell you a story. He said, I was on a Navy ship off a Japanese island the day the Japanese surrendered. I was called to the bridge, and, 
and, and the captain gave me a flag and he said, your job is to take a, a dinghy or um, sorry, any Navy folks had a small boat, right? With a, with a security party, right? And you're going to go to this island and what you're going to do is that there, there, are, there are known Japanese uh, soldiers there. Uh, your job with a small courting party is to go and raise the flag where they have surrendered. So Judge Blot got on the boat with a small quartering party. And as he hits the beach of the island, he sees what he feels the equivalent of a battalion sized element of Royal Japanese Imperial soldiers. And they're ragged, they're, they, they have weapons. Uh, they're staring at him with a stone look on their face. Uh, and, and, and Judge Blot told me, he said, Jeff, he said, they, I just knew they are gonna shoot me dead. He said, I just knew they were going to shoot me dead on the spot. He said, but I had a job to do. He said, I had the flag. And, and, and he said, I started walking. He said, I kept my head down and I started walking towards the flagpole, which I could see. And he said, I walked and as I walked, got closer, he said, the, the crowd, crowd opened up. And, I, and, and he said, I was holding the flag, holding the flag. You know, he said, I was scared. And he said, I got to the flagpole. I connected the American flag to raise it. And he says he did. He heard the Japanese regimental commander uh, in, in Japanese call his troops to attention. And, and he said, you see, Jeff, he said, my point is, he said, the flag protected me. The flag protected me. And he put his, he put his hand on my knee and he said, the flag will protect you too. And so I submit to you today with, with all the issues we have in our country and what a great country and we have our differences we have, we, we, we have serious disagreements, um, but, but I would say that each of us look to the flag every day, to the ideals and the values that it stands for. And that we use, we, we apply the ideals of the flag and how we treat each other and how we live our lives and how we prepare that next generation. And if we do that, I believe too that the, the flag will protect us too. Thank you for giving me the honor to be here today. God bless each and every one of you. Well, thank you so much. Very moving. I truly appreciate that. It was the personal stories, right? And how can you sit here and not feel? So I look at your words, right? It was the recognition, the, um, what is it? recognition remembrance, and responsibility. And do you just feel it? Um, so thank you, right, for personalizing that. And then I think you are correct. No sacrifice is too great. And I think you brought that message home quite well. So thank you for that. Uh, in honor of you being our guest speaker, we do have a book that we're donating to Alexander Elementary's library. It's Vinny Gets a Job. Um, the general's already kindly signed that. Um, and I was going to do a little humor. I almost feel like it's wrong after your, right, your talk. It's just <laughs> not right. But I was going to Rob's comment. Like every time I go by the Dollar General, <laughs> and I, I think your, your talk was well worth more than a dollar. Um, however, if you guys do want to make a contribution to CART, the, the, it's for Alzheimer's research. Buckets are on the table. And as you know, we have champions or CART match um, individuals. Last meeting, it was George Fletcher who a resounding, right? The highest so far, I think he had a match like $106 or $160. Uh, today's um, individual match donor will be Elizabeth Lyons. And then also we have um, individuals who have stepped up through the end of January. But if you'd like to join that cause and become a match donor, just put a business card or write your name on a piece of paper and drop it in. We have a couple announcements, so stay, stay tuned for me with me for a moment. But I would like to recognize, it was mentioned, we do have a veteran support committee that works very closely with Upstate Warrior Solutions. We are invested in helping veterans who are transitioning out of the military into the Greenville community, area neighboring community, or who maybe are already in a current position or looking ways to improve their current living environment or status. Um, so we're very actively involved. So George leads that committee. So George, and if there are any other um, members of that committee that are present, if you could just stand for a moment because you should be recognized for the efforts. George, stand up, come on. Anybody else? I'm here. Greg is in the back. I should just want to wave. You guys are kind of embarrassing. Nobody likes to stand. Okay. But thank you for that. 
Um, so other announcements, Chris Kringle Holiday Village, Kringle Holiday Village, again, volunteers are needed, um, purchase a six, that's awesome, already 1,600 tickets sold, that's, that's really cool. Um, and then suppose you probably have, I had somebody while I was getting my hair done, come up to me, my hairdresser, and say, weren't you just talking about this, Ramona? Look, my husband sent me a text and had to cut out with a picture of like a, a news blast or something. So word is spreading, um, and please be involved with that. We also have, again, time of giving, time of need as we enter the holidays. So Alexander Elementary has a couple of upcoming events where our support is needed. Uh, they're doing their teacher appreciation committee is having an event out there on November 18th. So at 1030 is when it starts. They need volunteers to just um, walk to the different classrooms and give gifts to the teacher. So it's low effort um, and up to 10 people are needed. If they can get the 10, then it'll be broken down into two groups. But seek out somebody from Alexander Elementary. There are several people here in the room um, for that. Now that's November 18th. Then after Chris Kringle, December 16th, um, from 1015 to 1245, this one, they need 10 volunteers to supervise students in the cafeteria while they'll have a teacher appreciation lunch. Um, and again, if they can get enough, they'll have two shifts. Then on uh, Alexander, we're doing the food boxes. So on the afternoon of November 18th, I think it's around 2.45. Um, if you're willing to help put food into the boxes, uh, then Scott, you're smiling over there, right? So see Scott, um, he can give you more information on that as well. And then we're also doing ad hoc projects, again, through your generous donations. So currently, Westcliff Elementary, another Title I school, has asked us if we could sponsor nine children um, for Christmas. So there's a tree out there on the table with stars with the child's name. And, it, and the things are, they need a pair of shoes. They'd like to have an outfit. Um, some, some very, very simple things. You have two options. You can adopt a child or you can just pick a star off of the tree and pick up one gift for a child. Again, we've asked to just sponsor nine. Chris Manley um, is out there and he's spearheading this event. So if you are able to help, willing to help a child have a better Christmas, again, nine children, please go pick a star off, off the tree. Um, and then lastly, another ad hoc project, Welcome Elementary is another Title I school that's reached out and um, very little funding, again, is provided to teachers and staff. That's why we're doing so much at Alexander Elementary as well. But they've asked for a staff appreciation lunch. So we're going to be providing that on November 16th. They have approximately 100 staff. Um, and at 1030, it runs till about noon. But if you want to pop out there just to say hello, Everything's taken care of. Maple Street is partnering with us again. So no catering. It's just more being a greeter and thanking them for their service as we thank all of our veterans, active military as well, and anyone who has a family member who has made that sacrifice um, for the betterment of our country. So with that, if we'll stand, we'll do the four-way test, please. <clears throat> of the things we think say or do? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? With that, thank you for attending today.